Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a wildcard search using the like keyword. Today's question comes from Xavier from Barry St. Edmunds, England, one of my gold members. Xavier asks, I need to create a report to show all of my customers who have email addresses and a few specific domains like Gmail and Yahoo. How can I do that? Well, Xavier, the easiest way to do that is to learn something called a wildcard search in a query using the like keyword. Let me show you how it works. Okay, this is my basic free blank customer template. You can find a copy of this on my website. There's a link to download it down below in the description below the video window. In here, we've got our basic customer list and our customer form. Now, I added a couple of different records in here for the purposes of this example, but all I did was go into the customer table and I put a few extra people in here and I changed a few things just so you could see some of the keyword stuff working better. Now, I know you're searching for email domains and we'll get to that in a minute, but let me show you how to search with something a little easier first. Let's take a look at first name. Now, let me shrink this table up so we can see the list of all of our customers here and let's create a query to go down below here. So create. Query design, here's a blank query. If you don't know how to make queries, I got other videos on how to make queries with criteria in them. I'll put some links down below. If you've never seen this before, go watch that stuff first, then come back here. I'm gonna add my customer table to my query and then close the tables pane. And I'm gonna resize this guy so it's down underneath the table here, just so we can see everybody at the same time. Move that right like that. Bring this up a little bit. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna save this real quick as my customer Q for query. Okay. Let's bring first name and last name down into my query. Let's go ahead and run the query real quick to see what we get. I'm going to open up the ribbon here by double clicking on design and click on run to run this query. And that's what we got. We got all of the customers showing up there. That's fine. Let's go back to design view. Now, if I want to see just the first names that are the word Jim, I can come down here in criteria and inside of quotes, put the word Jim. And now when I run the query, I'll see just the first names that are equal to Jim. But what if I want to see the names that start with the letter J? Well, to do that, we have to learn the like keyword and the wildcard characters. Now, there are a bunch of them, but the two important ones are the star and the question mark. The star, the asterisk, says any number of characters at any position. The question mark says one character at a specific position. Then there's the hashtag or the pound symbol or the octothorpe, whatever you want to call it. And that is one numeric character at a specific position. I almost never use this guy. Pretty much always the first two. So if you want to see all of the customers whose first name starts with the letter J, come down here, type in the like keyword, and then in quotes, J star, just like that. That says show me all the first names that start with the letter J and then any number of characters after it. And now if I run this query, there you go. There's all the J names. You can see that Richard and Chris don't show up. Now let's say you want to see all of the names that start with the letter J and end with the letter S. All right, back to design view. I right, can come down here now and say J star S that says it's got to start with a J it can have any number of characters in the middle and then end with an S. And now if I run the query, all I see is James. That's the only name that meets that criteria. How about any name that ends in an S? Forget the J, right? You can do star S, just like that. Any number of characters at the beginning ending with an S. There's James and Chris. Now this is how you would find your email domains that you want to look for, Xavier. Come into design view here. Let's get rid of the criteria under first name. And then let's bring over email address over here. Now we can do criteria. Now I don't have any Gmail, but I got Amicron and 599CD. So let's do here, like, quote, star at amicron.com. You want to make sure you got the at in there so that they don't have amicron.com somewhere else in the, you know, they might have 444 amicron.com. So this here makes sure it's that exact domain, but any username at amicron.com. And now when I run my query, there you go. 
And if you're searching for multiple items, okay, you can use the or rows. Remember, it's and across or down. So if you're looking for Yahoo and Gmail, for example, you could come down here and put the second domain there. In my case, I've got 599CD. And this will show all. Let me, let me, let me cheat up here and change this to just 5CD.com. Okay, now when I run this, click and run it. There you go. All right, so you can see the two domains that I'm looking for here. So that should answer your question, but let me show you a couple more tricks. Let's take a look at that single character wildcard. Let's go back to design view. Let's get rid of email address. Let's go back to working with first names. It's just easier for now. Okay, let's use the first character is a J and the third character is an M. All right, we got James and Jim. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, let's come down here. We'll type in like, quote, J, question mark, M. All right, that should give us the first character, J, any second character, and the third character, M. Let's see what that gives us. I'm only seeing Jim. What's up with that? I should be seeing James too, right? The third character is M. Well, there's more stuff after it. Okay, that M says the last position has to be M, All right? J, and then the second position, any character, and then the last position, M. This is a tricky one, all right? So after that, make sure you put an asterisk if you want to find Jim or James. I used to always use this example in my classes to, to stump people. I used to have fun with this one. All right, so that's what you have to do to make sure that you have any number of characters after that. If you want to see all names where the third character is M, you go question mark, question mark, M, star. And now you'll see the same names here, but if you had a C, I, M, whatever. Okay? Remember, the question marks is exactly one character. The star is any number of characters. That third wild card is just like the question mark, except it's for numbers, numeric values only. Now, it will work with both text and numeric fields, but the number that goes there has to be numeric. For example, here's our email. All right, let's go back to email. Let me get rid of this. And I'll bring email down here. All right, if you want to see anybody who's got, let's say, the first character of their domain is numeric. I know it's weird, but it's just the example I'm going to use. All right, we can say down here, like star at pound sign star and then you could put like dot com in here if you want to but I'll just close it up all right and now if I run it there you go all right it just shows the email domains that start with a number you can use that for addresses too like here you can see we've got one address that doesn't start with a number value all right so instead of email Let's throw address in there. And I want to see just the addresses that start with a number. All right, so this would be like number sign star, like that. The first character has to be numeric, and then after that, any number of characters. And there's your numeric addresses. That's great for finding addresses where you don't have a, a street number on there. This will also work with numeric values, too. I've got one in here called family size. Let's find it up here in the table. There's family size. I got two, 11, four, and one. So if you want to say the first character has to be a one, you'd say like, got to still treat it as a string though, one, and then star like that. The first character has got to be a one and any number of characters after it. All right, there's my ones, my 11 and my one. All right, they're all going to be numeric. So it's kind of silly to have to use this, the, the number sign in here. But this actually, if you do one number sign like that, you'll get just 11. Why? Because remember, these are treated like the question mark. And this says the second character has to be numeric. See that? All kinds of little tricks you can do. So Xavier, I hope that answers your question and shows you how to search for specific domain names in email addresses using a wildcard search. Again, I pretty much stick to the first two. I almost never use that third one. Want to learn more about wildcard searches? I've got an extended cut for members only, silver members and up. In this extended cut, I'll show you how to match a specific set of characters. So like if you want J and then either an A or an E and M, you can search for a set of characters, a range of characters. 
You can exclude a certain set of characters, same rules. You can match numeric characters only, so like 0 through 5 or 8 through 9. You can find special characters, so if, you're, if your field actually has a star, a question mark, a number sign, or the brackets in it, I'll show you how to search for those and lots more. That's in the extended cut for members, and you can find out more about becoming a member by clicking on the join link down below the video. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page, and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.